the staggering scale of Starlink. It's impossibly huge. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. This is the full version, of course. You're watching on Friday, or maybe it's a condensed version over the weekend on the main channel, My Tesla Weekend, as opposed to the second channel, My Tesla Live, where the live stuff do go. I wanted to give a quick thanks to upgrading Patreon, Gort. Thank you for your continued support. And I do have more of these to announce in coming days. Thank you, guys. So Starlink, hey man, what is it? Never heard of it. Never heard of it. It's a crazy idea. It's an impossible idea. It's a big idea. We're going to put up thousands and thousands of satellites to provide high-speed internet around the world, especially in less served places. In the pre-show chat, JJ had asked if it will ever replace fiber, and I believe the answer is no. I do not believe there is sufficient bandwidth for that, and I don't believe that's the intention. And if you could provide fiber, would you rather provide fiber speeds or 10 times as many terminals? I think the 10 times more is the better answer. So you can't launch thousands of satellites. It's too expensive, right? Interestingly, uh, it turns out you can. There's about 4,500 satellites in orbit. And that includes the Starlink ones. So who owns them all? Interestingly, <laughs> if you look at this chart, you'll see that uh, SpaceX operates them. Now, this 1,600 number is grossly out of date, as, as it always is. It can't stay in date because every week or two they launch another bunch, sometimes twice in a weekend from two different places. So that means Elon is the majority owner of most of the satellites in space because uh, it says 1655. This very interesting page, Jonathan's space page, shows a more up-to-date table 2,841 is what he's saying. That's just the active ones. They've launched over 3,000. And by the way, when this number hits 4,000, Elon will have been, Starlink will have been, uh, the company that launched over half the satellites of all time. So most satellites, historically, are musky. Very cool. Starlink operates more satellites than every other country combined. Everything's impossible until it isn't. JJ, I think, was bugging me for a t-shirt of this, and I tried to make it, uh, but the merch store decided no, because uh, no, just no, because, as they said, Tesla is an owned asset and cannot be used on the Spring platform. They're talking about my logo. So that's ridiculous. So if anybody has a better solution for t-shirt printing on demand, I would appreciate uh, letting me know. Because that's ridiculous. Here are, this is a neat one, this is Starlink.sx. This shows you your location and where all the satellites are around you and how they're connected. It's ridiculous, it's so cool. If you want a better visualization, and by the way, moving markers do not represent the actual size of Starlink satellites. It's pretty hilarious that they have to put that, but apparently they do. So cool. And if you look at satellitemap.space, um, this is the world. You are here. Uh, I've known a lot of people who lived on this planet. This is neat because you can see the trains that haven't uh, fully deployed to their to their altitude. And you can see one, two, three, four, five, six. You can see, I mean, there are just so many and they're everywhere. And you can see the polar ones. The poles are finally getting some coverage. Just neat, just fascinating. Love this stuff. Uh, what does it cost to launch them? Uh, if you look at this one, it says Starlink could cost 250,000 each. And Falcon 9 could cost less than 30 million. And this is saying even it, it could already be as low as 15 million and under 250,000. So, but let's take the higher number. Let's say it's 30 million. Let's say it's uh, uh, 52 satellites. That would be $1.8 billion. 
uh, to launch all of them, less the cost of R&D. I realize now that I posted launch instead of lanch. I meant to say lanch, so this is wrong here. I apologize for that. <laughs> anyway, John asked, do we have a map that shows the ground stations? And we do. On starlink.sx, each of these dots, the little orange dots, represent ground stations. So you can see where all of them are. So oh, let's take the, the lower number. Let's say it is 15 million to launch, and it is uh, 13 million for the satellites. That gives you a per satellite cost, assuming 52 in a Falcon 9, of $538,000. That's really cheap, man. That's really, really cheap. You know satellites are expensive? Turns out they are. But why are they so expensive? You know, a weather satellite, $290 million. A spy satellite, might cost an additional 100 million. Yeah, it's expensive. And then launching could be anywhere between 10 and 400 million. And that's because, you know, it depends, you know, 10 million would be for like a CubeSat and 400 million would be for something going much higher that's much heavier, but it's expensive. So why are satellites so expensive? Because there's no margin for error. There's no margin. <clears throat> if it fails, you're in a world of hurt. What are you going to do? Uh, spend another 100 million or 300 million? Can't do it. So they, they're one-off devices, which makes them very expensive, and they have to be 100% reliable. SpaceX do not have to be 100% reliable. I think out of the first operational batch, something like 10% failed. But that's still much cheaper than making them perfect because they got the launch providers. So what does it cost normally to do a launch? Well, if you look at NASA, they're spending $383 million. Oh, I'm sorry. That's just for the launch tower. And that's before the cost overruns, putting it at $960 million for a launch tower. Oh, and I say NASA. It's not NASA. It's, uh, it's Bechtel, I guess. That's the problem. It's a cost plus contract. The more you charge, the more cost overrun you have, the more profit you make. Absolutely insane. So what does a actual, like, um, like a nice heavy lift launch cost? Would you believe it's $4.1 billion per launch? The SLS will cost $4.1 billion per launch for Artemis. Now, mind you, that is a very big boy, but it's terrible. That's ridiculous. In, in March, they announced they'd hit 250,000 subscri uh, subscribers. But just two months later, they passed 400,000. Are you really making 75,000 terminals a month? Probably not. Probably not. But even still... If you were to take 400,000 times $110, that's, uh, what do we got here? Let's find our zeros. That's $44 million a month in gross revenue. Now you have to operate your ground stations and you have to operate your, you know, air traffic control, so to speak. You've got a lot of costs, but most of the cost is the satellites. Four, $44 million a month. Now, mind you, they are... Uh, actually reducing prices in many markets. Not in the US, but in parts of Europe, it's gotten a little bit cheaper. Um, they've reduced it in Croatia down to $49 a month. In uh, South America, it's been dropped to uh, about half. Uh, and uh, in the Netherlands, it's down to 105. So that's pretty interesting. So, even, so they're lowering the price in places where it makes sense. But still, even if you figure an average of $100, $100 times 400,000 terminals, let's find our zeros, is a half billion dollars a year. It's a half billion dollars a year in gross revenue. And that's only at 400,000. The addressable market is much bigger than that. 
because we haven't even started working outside of the West. In India, they were required to refund deposits that people had paid because the service was supposed to be there by now, and it is not. But this is coming slowly, and it's, I assume, almost entirely due to regulatory concerns. So the addressable market is massive. Um, SpaceX got millions from the Air Force for Starlink services in Europe and Africa. And for that matter, they got millions uh, to put coverage in Ukraine, where they don't even have ground stations. Kind of difficult and perhaps unwise to put a ground station in a war zone. But the addressable market gets even bigger because you can get them on your boat. What a deal. Can you imagine $110 for each boat at sea? Well, what about $5,000 a month? <laughs> well, it sounds outrageous, but it's not for you and me. Certainly not for me. It's for ships at sea. 5000 a month is not crazy when you figure in, uh, when you look at the competition. Real, serious internet at sea is expensive. And if you think about it in terms of a cruise ship, I mean, it's not that bad. A couple hundred bucks a day, uh, you're going to charge more than that to your customers. I mean, really, put five or six on the ship, give everybody a, an actual slice of bandwidth. For that matter, they're gonna be on planes. We don't know what the price is. JSX has already signed a deal to be their first uh, in-flight customer. But again, even if it's 5,000, you figure 200 bucks a day, how many flights you got? That flight, at least two, maybe four. 50 bucks per flight to have broadband over the poles, over the oceans. That's a good deal. And then, of course, you've got yesterday's big announcement that T-Mobile will be getting a coverage boost from Starlink. Now, what they didn't say, and I've been trying to find answers to, is they're using T-Mobile's Spectrum. Spectrum is something you have to bid on. It is auctioned off. And it is generally use it or lose it, but generally it is used. They are using T-Mobile's bandwidth, their spectrum. Do they get to use it for other things too? Because if so, this is a bigger get than we may have realized. We don't know any of the financials on it. And I loved it. In the event, a young lady had asked, how many terminals can one satellite support? And Elon said, ha 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 ha. In the context of T-Mobile, right, he's not going to answer that question. I would very much like to know. Because then we could do the math. We could start figuring out how many subscribers you could actually have. And I don't think he wants that revealed just yet. So that's kind of fun. Now this is fun. This is the sour grapes part. U.S. Appeals Court upholds Starlink deployment change. So Starlink had asked for permission to put up more satellites in the 550-kilometer band at that altitude. And, yeah, nearly two-thirds of the 4,408 have already been uh, put in orbit, which is really crazy to think about. But DISH and Viasat, Viasat, challenge the modification. On what grounds? Well, it's sour grapes. Because what they actually said is, <laughs> they're worried about the environment. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, they need to study the harm to the environment caused by SpaceX. Oh, please. That is, <laughs> there's a Duwamish, maybe, tribe in Washington. Um, and the tribe is always on the verge of recognition. Several presidents on their way out the door have signed orders recognizing them, which were then reversed by the next president a month later. The big opposition to them getting tribal recognition comes from the other tribes in the area. 
because <clears throat> those places are outside the city of Seattle, quite a ways out, hour or two, and they all have casinos. And if the Duwamish uh, get recognition, they could put a casino in Seattle. So all the other tribes oppose it. On what grounds? Fishing rights. That's honestly what they say. And that is so dishonest and dumb. So dishonest and dumb. By the way, I've got more shirt designs I'm going to show you at the end that I also am not allowed to make. A commissioner at the FCC slammed his own agency for rejecting SpaceX's bid uh, for funding for rural Starlink satellite internet. He says there's no legal basis. It is without a lawful basis. The reason they gave is, well, he they bid on a certain speed, and it looks like they may struggle to deliver those speeds. Well, okay. And I've seen people complain, oh, it's, why are we giving billionaires more money? Don't give him any money. This money's being given to someone. And I guarantee you there's a billionaire involved. They just don't tweet as much. Is it the mean tweets? You don't like the tweets? So let's be reasonable. And this will provide connection immediately to people who otherwise might wait years and years to get it. And I hate Business Insider, but this article is actually not trash, which is, which is quite unique for them. And of course, um, another interesting one is if you're in an area that's already full and you still want to get Starlink, you can get one with best effort tier, meaning your speeds are, may not always be complete. They may not always be as high as you would like. But if you don't have a choice, you can get it. Just know that it may be a little slower than you would like. But for a lot of people, that's fine. Some of us do most of our browsing during off-peak hours. So yeah, that's a pretty interesting way to do it. And by the way, I, um, I have canceled my Starlink. Canceled it a couple weeks ago when I got fiber. As you've noticed, I'm streaming very smooth now. And uh, they have an interesting parting gift for customers. A neat little going away gift that's actually really great for shareholders. They charge you for another whole month. So even though I canceled in early August, they charge me for an, a whole extra month. Ah, <sighs> what a lovely going away present to themselves from me. So that's fun. Of course, I've got to give a big thanks to my Patreons who get early access, bonus content, all that good stuff. Make sure your name appears correctly on here. It's mostly alphabetical with uh, new signups at the top until the next month when they go in alphabetically. And I do that because otherwise I can't find them. Well, there it is, and there you go. If you want to see the full, uncut, 30-ish minute version of this episode, head over to the second channel, link in the description, and subscribe over there if you want to catch these live each Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific, as well as the Fast Charging with B&B &B podcast, co-hosted with Bear from Bear's Workshop. So... What did I miss or misunderstand? Tell me in the comments, and stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots on the other side.